Morning, everyone, and thank you very much for joining me. This is the DAX Open with myself, Russell Shaw. I'm one of the senior market specialists at FXM, and my email address is after at fxm.com. Today is Monday, it's the 31st of January 2022. Just going to bring up our high risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments, then I'll bring up our commentaries disclaimer. All right, just keep this on screen for a few moments as well. And uh, we'll just take a look at FXM uh, Market Scope 2.0 for the analysis, which I'll bring up now. And um, before we get into the analysis itself, let's just go through the uh, CNBC morning note just to um, get an idea of what headlines we need to be um, cognizant of. Okay, so the headline reads, European market set to jump as January trading comes to an end. European stocks expected to open higher on Monday, the last trading day of January, as investors keep an eye on political developments between Russia and Ukraine, as well as oil prices. The high open in Europe comes after major Asia indexes jumped overnight, with the Nikkei 225 in Japan rising 1.47% in afternoon trade while the topics index climbed 1.19%. Markets in Hong Kong and Singapore closed earlier Monday ahead of the Lunar New Year holidays. Official data released Sunday showed Chinese factory activity growth slowing in January. The country's official manufacturing purchasing, car, and purchasing managers index for January was 50.1, just above the 50 level, which is effectively separates uh, growth from contraction. A private survey released over the weekend showing Chinese manufacturing activity contracting in January. Meanwhile, U.S. stocks, uh, a big one. Uh, meanwhile, U.S. stock futures were higher in overnight trading on Sunday as investors braced for the final trading day in what could be the worst month for the S&P 500 since March 2020. Markets have been roiled by volatility in January as investors worry about inflation, supply chain issues, and the upcoming rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. The Fed indicated last week that it is likely to raise interest rates for the first time in more than three years in order to combat historically high inflation. Markets are now pricing in five quarter percentage point interest rate hikes in 2022, with the first coming in March. So I just want to read that. Markets, reread that. Markets are now pricing at five quarter percentage point interest rates. So five 25 basis point hikes. So they'll be looking at five rate hikes according to the CNBC morning note. Um, investors in Europe are keeping an eye on developments between Russia and Ukraine with the UN Security Council set to meet on Monday to discuss ongoing tensions between the neighbors amid a buildup of soldiers on Russia's border with Ukraine. Earnings come from Ryanair on Monday and data releases include preliminary fourth quarter GDP for the Eurozone and preliminary inflation from Spain and Germany. All right, let's take a look at the charts. So, I wasn't here on Thursday and um, Friday, but this has, this this picture's changed completely since we had the the last morning um, DAX webinar. Let me just zoom in here. Uh, sorry, wrong button. Here we go. And um, it's the support level is holding. So let's put in all the times this has been respect to one. We'll put this as two, three, four, five. Okay. And um, so what we can say, the, ve the very least that we can say about this is that uh, the market certainly watches this 15,000 level of interest. Okay. So it, it's clearly the key level at the moment so let's put this in as a 
support area. So the market watch is 15,000, obviously, like a hawk. We can see every time we drop there, uh, there seems to be some sort of support coming through for the market. Um, for our purposes, for our purposes, um, we want to break down whether this is a, a potential reversal. Okay, and what we need for a reversal is at least three candles. So we need uh, something like this. Okay, so this is an important week in terms of the three candle uh, structure that we look for. This is what we call a, um, call this um, in, in short term bar analysis, it's called a, a pivot point, pivot point reversal. Don't get confused with uh, S1, S2, S3, R1, R2, R3 pivots. In, in short term bar analysis, this is what we call a, um, a pivot reversal. Uh, it's in, in, my, in, my, in my estimate, my mind, the most important um, bar that there is. You can give me all the uh, you can give me all the candle patterns, all the bar patterns, but the one that I personally feel is the most powerful is this one because it has it has to be present. It has to be present when there are swings. Okay. Now the the, the difficulty is that it doesn't necessarily mean there is going to be a swing. Otherwise, it would be easy, right? But you can't have a swing without this pivot point. For our purposes, we call it a uh, our, our reversal candle, and we look for the uh, the three criteria. We look for the lowest low, then we look for price as the second point to take out the the reference candles um, high. Once we've got those two, then the close coming in above the reference candle is uh, really that's everything which is effectively the pivot point so this is our, our reference candle reversal now um that means this week we watch to see if we can close above last week's high now the headline that we read this morning um is a good a good sign saying that it, we, we set to jump as as january trading comes to an end However, remember we're looking at a weekly chart. So what really counts is Friday's close, not, not today's close. Um, so we want, we want to see if there's a big strong blue candle here that effectively closes above last week's reference candle. Um, and I think that um, is uh, a very positive sign. After such a challenging uh, January, um, the idea here is um, well, maybe, just maybe, this is a, a, a dip that is exploitable. Okay, just maybe this is a dip that's exploitable. Now, I want to clear this up. Um, I hope everyone's got this. I'm going to clear up a lot of the, uh, the line um, studies because there's more to say about this. And I think we don't want a cluttered chart. So let's just get rid of all of this. Uh, let's keep this red line in. We'll take the actually probably should have kept that probably should have kept this uh, green uh, so let's just recreate it okay. let's just keep that there all right the reason that i want the uh, the reason that i want the um the green sideways um rectangles is just because we're not trending yet right we caught between this uh, this trading range between the uh, these two green areas uh, which um Let's just make this even a stronger um, reference. So we're kind of uh, trading in this range between the green uh, shaded horizontals. Um, clearly, we want to break above it. Now, we've got um, the potential. We've got the potential for a reference candle reversal, and um, I think that the uh, the power has shifted. Over the last, over Thursday, Friday, 
to a point where we may we may get that. So let's just ex let's just ex um, examine the potential permutations from here. Um, before we do that, let's understand last week's sentiment. So this is, um, I think, uh, how we need to understand um, the opening for this week, right? So the opening for this week is based on how uh, the bulls and the bears finished last week. So you can see that, um, let me do it this way, it's a bit easier. Okay, so the candle opens up over there. So we'll put it there and there's a huge sell down, something like that. And then there's a kind of a huge up move and kind of closes maybe like that. Um, in fact, it, let's make it slightly different. Let's say, I mean, I can go back and check, but let's say that it opened up slightly higher because we've got this high here, right? Um, then the bears take over, kind of hit down there. So at this stage, uh, the bears are completely in control. Bull, bulls nowhere to be seen, except at this low, the bulls come in full power and we get this kind of a sentiment. So uh, what's the big deal about that is that the bears lose control right here, okay? Which is this point here, okay? So the bears lost control and uh, the week ends, the week ends with the uh, bulls in control. And that's how the week ends. Now the key is, do the bulls uh, capitalize on that? And that's what this reference candle reversal is going to see. So if we get a close above this guy here, then we are um, seeing further bullish follow through. That would be a good sign. Now, let's just understand the particular permutations here. Let's take this out. So we could have something like this. that would be really bullish. Uh, so you'd have a reference trough, this would become the reference peak, you'd have a higher trough, higher peak. So we'd get the, we'd get the uptrend there. So that's the first, that's the first uh, permutation. The second permutation is of course, something a lot more uh, bearish. So this would be a lower peak, lower trough. Then, we, then we'd get a, a bear trend. Okay. So that's what we can. Um, we could get a miraculous movement up like that, which would be um, not quite a trend yet. We would still need the pullback and then the movement up. So uh, there would still be a, a dip here that we could potentially exploit. And then the very last, the very last uh, permutation that I could think of right now would kind of be sort of moving sideways. So the reason that we've got all of these um, what of these um, potential, the reason we've got all these potential um, cases in front of us is because we actually only got two points to reference at the moment. We've got a peak and a trough. We don't have any other references. We don't have a higher peak. Uh, we don't have, sorry, we don't have a lower peak, lower trough. We don't have a higher trough, higher peak. All we've got is two reference points, which uh, makes uh, analysis um, uh, more speculative than usual. It's, it's always going to be speculative. It's always going to be based on a probability. But if you've got a, an uptrend, well, then, you know, there's a momentum there. If we've got a downtrend, well, there's a momentum there. Right now, we've just got these two points. And because we've got these two points, well, now we got to rely on the fact that the bears lost control last week. The week ended with the bulls in control. Now we're looking to see if the bulls are going to follow through. That will be the first bullish uh, bullish development for for um, um, to confirm this reference candle. Once we've got a reference candle reversal, ideally, what I would like is to see this. If we get this. Uh, then everything changes. Then we've got the higher trough, higher peak. So we're going to have to just watch this very, very carefully. 
Um, so we must understand we are trading trendless on a primary basis at the moment. Okay, we are trading trendless. We are going to make our job harder. However, we do have a situation where the bears lost control and the bulls really pushed um, hard, and that's where we find ourselves. The question is, do we give the benefit of the doubt to the uh, the bulls? Um, or not. And this is where it gets tricky, okay, because we're going to go down to our daily chart here, and we can't say for certain, we can't say for certain um, that um, the bulls are outright winners here. In other words, we're still in our zone three according to our methodology. Okay, we're still in our, so what's the What's the big deal about being in zone three? Well, effectively, okay, the longer we stay in zone three, the higher the probability of a downtrend. We really want price to close out of zone three in zone two. Once we do that on a relative basis, it's strong because we've moved out of weak, the weak zone three into the neutral zone two. That's a relatively strong movement forward. That would be a good sign. But until we do that, we've got to recognize the fact that we've got a one, two, two, three, okay, possibility here as well. So you can see that unfortunately, we've got only two points on the weekly. We've got a, um, we've got a, uh, a situation where the, um, the bear seems to have lost control. But I wouldn't count from quite out yet because we're still on the daily zone three. Um, if the stochastic continues into that area, that would be a big boost for the bulls. Okay, so we want to watch the stochastic. If if it falls back down here, well, you know that bullish end to the week, maybe it's losing steam. So the picture unfortunately whilst more positive is not clear it's still murky that in my opinion is the environment we're in okay let me just see i've got a comment here from andy on the daily we have an ascending triangle um i'll take a look at that Andy. i'll see if i can so um, all right, so the cash market's just opening. That's why my system's hanging a bit. Um, let's go here and see if we can pick up that ascending triangle. Um, let's change this. Just get rid of all of these. All right, let's see what we've got in a daily. I'm not sure I'm seeing it, Andy. Um, just if you just sort of tell me the points you're looking at. Um, something like that. Is, is this is this what you see? Kind of like that. Uh, January only. Uh, let me just see if I can see it. Uh, I can't see it. Are you? Will you be able to send me a screenshot? Just email me a screenshot. I'll let the uh, I'll let the guys know tomorrow. I mean, ascending triangles typically may suggest um, may suggest bullishness. I um, of course want to uh, reiterate that the the weekly action does suggest a loss of control by the bears. That potentially um, 
plays into the that that potentially plays into that maybe that ascending uh, triangle. Um, what what we'll do uh, over here, I think, is well, if we cross from zone three into zone two, then potentially that ascending triangle is playing out. Um, my, my concern here, my concern here is that uh, we're going to get something like this. One, two, two, three, and I, and I don't want it to fall, us to fall into this trap. Okay, so um, whilst I want to reiterate the candlestick for last week, undeniably bullish, undeniably, but we want extra proof. Yes, in you know, in, in classical uh, candlestick charting, this is, um, let's call it a dragonfly doji, which is a very bullish candle. It's effectively telling us exactly what we know, that the bears have lost control. I don't think that's good enough. I think we've got to get a pivot point reversal here. We've got to get our three points. So, and the reason we want these three points is because these three points must be present at swings. Without these, there's no swing. They don't guarantee the swing. They don't guarantee the swing. But without them, we definitely don't get a swing. So this week, to me, is pivotal. If we get it, then sure, there may be that ascending triangle. I can't, if you just, um, I think this is what I think this is what you're seeing. Uh, can't see it. Uh, where is the daily? Uh, this thing here? Is this, is this what you're looking at? This thing? So we just, I think we just went a little bit uh, more proof that the, um, yeah, okay, I hear you. All right, yeah. So just looking at this. So, um, so it could be, you know, it, I mean, it could be. It could also be, um, I mean, it could also be a wedge. Something like that. Uh, if, if it's a wedge, uh, something like that, um, then the wedge is a continuation pattern. Uh, um, in other words, um, if it breaks down here. Um, now, do I think it's a wedge? Uh, I think we're lacking a few candles on the upside to truly call this a wedge. Um, so um, yes, there could be some sort of uh, bullishness there. Uh, again, <laughs> unfortunately, hindsight will tell us if the if you know the um, if the um, the higher lows here are going to win out. But that's the whole point. If the higher lows win out, yeah. Let's say this is a triangle. Let's just say it is. Okay, so then we're assuming, all right, well, the higher lows are showing that the demand seems to be increasing whilst the supply seems to be sort of constant. Eventually, what um, sort of we would um, suggest is eventually the demand outstrips sort of the supply, and then we get that breakout. And I think that's a fine way to look at the market, but that's going to be reflected by our three points. So we go back to the weekly. If we get that kind of movement that, that you're looking for there, Andy, then we get the third point. So then your reading of the triangle um, is correct. So I, I think we're looking kind of at the same thing. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced it's a triangle, but I'm not convinced it's, it's not a triangle. That's why I want to... I want to see uh, if we can move above this. 
I'm concerned, I'm concerned that it's a continuation pattern. So just in terms of technical theory, um, sort of flags, wedges, um, what else is there? Flags, wedges, pennants, those are all uh, categorized as continuation patterns. In other words, we see it continue down. Um, so, uh, and, and the way uh, that works is uh, kind of, look, let me bring up my, uh, let me bring up my um, Microsoft Paint. You see, the way that works is, it's easy to see, I think, in a textbook environment, once we're looking at the actual price action, it gets really difficult because, you know, real, real candles are unique, or well, not unique, but they can be different in every single. So what I try and do is, okay, so we know, uh, we know this is a bearish pennant, okay? We know this is a bearish flag, okay? And we know this would be a bearish wedge, okay? Something like that. These are not always easy to spot. So what we want to do is try and make it easy for us. So what we do is we look at a market rhythm. One, two, two, three. One, two, two, three. Now these two threes, these two threes here, are usually pennants, flags, and wedges. So that's kind of, um, if we just try and do the, and I'm not talking about counting Elliott waves here. What I'm doing is counting the corrections. Similarly, if we had to do this um, for the upside, it would be something like this. Okay, so we'd get like a pennant, okay. Uh, we'll get a flag, something like that, and we'll get a wedge. Now, these are all bullish continuation patterns. I hope I've done that wedge right. But it might not be so easy to classify those. So what we do is one, two, two, three. And there's two threes. Those are usually pennants, flags, wedges. One, two two, three. So um, I think that is uh, something that uh, we just need to consider. So what is this here? Is, is this uh, a continuation pattern? Because if it is, then we've got to look to the downside. Or is this actually the bulls showing that they're not letting price drop below that? 15,000 level, which is a very real possibility. So uh, we kind of guess what we guess where we are, where we've been for the last two weeks in this uh, uh, uncertain environment. Uncertainty, remember, equals risk. If we get this and we get the three conditions, I think then, Andy, uh, you're probably right. But let's just see how this uh, unfolds over the week. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the bulls are supporting that 15,000 area. And hopefully the portfolio managers have thought, well, okay, we've now been hammered uh, far enough. It's time to start picking up some bargains. And that's a bit effectively then what you'd be seeing with your um, ascending uh, triangle. Um, let's just go, but, to, I think, confirm that, uh, let's also look for the zones. So a movement, a relative movement from weakness to neut neutrality, I think, again, is probably a plus um, for that. If we can't get out of zone three, I'll start getting concerned. Uh, let's just go down to the hourly here, and um, let's just clean this up.
Okay, so the hourly doesn't look all that bad at the moment. Okay, the reason it doesn't look all that bad is because I think the stochastic's in a really good area. So that's the key, I think. Uh, we want to keep an eye on that stochastic. The longer we stay in this 80 area, the more underlying bullish momentum there is that is going to potentially push us up. Um, the crossover here, that would be um, that would be obviously an adverse type of uh, signal. And if we dropped out of this 80 area, uh, that would be uh, further um, bearishness. But if we hold, if we hold, okay, and we build a nice sort of platform in this 80 area, then uh, we possibly get this um, movement towards taking out last week's high, possibly get that movement breaking out of a potential ascending um, triangle. But uh, let's just watch that very, very carefully. At the moment, uh, my, um, my, my personal conclusion is uncertainty. It's uncertainty. I don't like the fact we've only got two reference points on the weekly. It, it just makes it a chart of us. Take a look at something like um, dollar. Okay. Here we've got multiple reference points. Trough, peak, high trough, high peak, high trough. That was a question mark. The last time that you and I looked at the dollar together, I can take this question mark out because we've got the high trough. In fact, we've got this high peak. You know? So um, that's the difference between a trend and then the DAX, which is non-trending. All we've got at the moment with the DAX is possibilities. So let's watch that very, very carefully. When we close at the end of the week, I think it's going to be tremendously important. Um, <laughs> uh, Pete's just saying that members of the Fed um, uh, closely going to be buying soon. All right. <laughs> there, have been, uh, there have been reports that they are. But a lot of those guys, Pete, were um, they resigned. <laughs> you know, so uh, who were they? Clarida, uh, Kaplan, and this one other, I can't remember his name. All right, uh, any other questions there, guys? I, I hope that was helpful. Uh, the, the, the best I can say at the moment is I think we still uncertain with a slight, slight advantage to the bulls. Any other questions there? All right, nothing coming through. Let's conclude at this point. And um, I'll speak to you guys soon. Thank you very much.